Hey, this is Emily with Snake Discovery, and today we're going to be sharing with you some tips and tricks to getting picky hognose snakes to eat. Hognose snakes, as adorable as they are, have a reputation for being picky eaters. And there are four main factors we've found that influence their willingness to eat, and those are how often or how you handle the hognose snake, the snake's environment, what you're offering it for food, and how you're attempting to feed it. We'll be going through all of those in today's video, so let's start with handling. I don't know if it's because maybe they get preyed upon more than other species of snakes out there, or they're just naturally a high-strung species, but it seems like hognose snakes are affected by too much handling, or they get stressed out more more easily than other types of snakes, so handling can be a concern when it comes to hognoses. If you just got a new hognose snake and just brought it home, it's important to leave it alone in its environment for at least a week without handling at all. In fact, you really shouldn't handle a new hognose snake until it starts eating regularly for you. Give it a week to just adjust to its new surroundings, then offer it food, and if it eats, that's wonderful. Give it a day or two to start digesting, and then you can start handling it, or maybe try to do two meals just to play it on the safe side and then start handling the hognose snake. However, if it does not take that first meal you offer it, give it another week without any handling and then try again. It's important to space out your feeding attempts with about five to seven days in between each offering. If you try to feed them something new every day or just try to feed them something every day, that's going to stress them out and it's not going to help your case. They're not going to eat very well for you that way. If you've had a hognose snake for a while and it suddenly stops eating for you, chances are it it's not a matter of how often or how long you're holding the snake, unless that's changed recently. If you've suddenly started holding the hognose snake more frequently or for longer periods of time and it stops eating, that's probably what's causing it. But if everything's been the same as far as handling goes, then it's probably something else that's triggering it to refuse food. If you're trying to feed your hognose snake in a separate container, then you'll of course have to pick it up momentarily to put it in said container and put it back in its enclosure. But if you're dealing with a hognose snake that doesn't want to eat, minimize handling as much as possible. Just hold them that bare amount to move them back and forth. Now, if you are having difficulties getting them to eat, then you might want to consider feeding them just inside of their enclosure so there's no handling whatsoever. We'll get to that in a little bit. The second factor that can influence their willingness to eat is their own environment. And nine times out of 10, it actually is something that's off in their environment that makes them refuse food. So there are a few things to consider here. First, you don't want to put a little baby hognose snake hatchling in a 10 gallon tank. They feel very exposed with that much space. And even though you might be thinking, well, they have endless space in the wild, babies will often just find a small area to live in, kind of like a microhabitat, if you will. Now you can replicate this in captivity with a 10 gallon tank by filling it up with all sorts of caves and other hides and foliage to climb on. But what most breeders and what we recommend too is actually just to house a little hatchling hognose in a six quart container. This might seem small for a hognose snake, but it's actually plenty of space for a hatchling without it being too much space. They're going to feel more secure in this slightly smaller environment. And when they get bigger, then they can upgrade to that 10 gallon tank or whatever you have provided for them. It's also important to give them a burrowing type of substrate. We personally use and recommend aspen fibers because they hold or maintain tunnel shape quite well, but make sure you give them enough to actually burrow in. It doesn't have to be aspen fibers. It could be another type of dry bedding. Remember, these guys live in the wild where they have well-drained and dry soils. So you don't want to give them something like tropical soil unless that too is dry. You'll also want to make sure they have about two inches of that substrate so they can tunnel inside of it. After the substrate, make sure they have at least a couple of hides in their enclosure, at least one on the warm end and one on the cool end. Their hides don't have to necessarily be store-bought caves that are specifically sold as hides. You can use other things instead. Just make sure it's something they can feel completely enclosed and hidden inside, like half logs or tubes aren't really good hides because they're exposed on both ends. Instead, use something like a small box or some water dishes are hollow underneath and that can count as a hide. The point of a hide is to give the snake somewhere to curl up and feel secure and well hidden inside of. So you want the hide to be just big enough for them to fit inside. If you put a hatchling in an adult sized cave, it might not feel very secure in that because there's so much extra room around it. Instead, you want to give a hatchling a smaller cave so that I can feel 
kind of, not, not squished, but secure, if that makes any sense. Once you've ensured that their enclosure is appropriate and uh, an appropriate size with the right decorations inside, make sure that it's of the right temperature too. Hognose snakes should have a warm end of around 87 to 90 degrees max for their warm end, and the cool end can just gradually taper off to room temperature, so around 70 degrees, give or take. We recommend using a heat mat below the enclosure, used of course with a thermostat to prevent it from overheating. However, if the heat mat isn't functioning properly or you just aren't providing the right amount of heat and it's too cold, then they will refuse to eat. Being cold-blooded, they need it to be at least 75 degrees Fahrenheit in order to digest their food. So if it's around that temperature or much lower, any lower really, they're not going to eat anything because they know they are unable to digest it. Since you are providing them with preferably about two inches of substrate and giving them a heat source probably from underneath the enclosure, which is what most hognose snake keepers do, keep in mind that this is a burrowing species, so they're gonna dig down into that substrate to the heat source. That means you don't want the heat source to be uh, 90 degrees at above the substrate because that means it might be 110 degrees at the bottom of that substrate where the heating element is because that snake can access that 100 degree temperature level down there and it could get too hot. So another thing just to kind of keep in mind. And finally, as far as their habitat goes, put their enclosure in a stress-free area of the house. Don't put their enclosure on the floor because feet walking by may cause vibrations that can spook or stress out the hognose snake. Put them up on a shelf or a, uh, a dresser or something like that where they're more elevated and can therefore feel more secure. Not only will, again, feet walking by cause them to stress out, but other pets like dogs and cats can definitely cause a hognose snake to stress out. So if you put them on a dresser where there's enough of a ledge for a cat to jump up onto and stare at the snake, a cat is a predator to a hognose snake, so that's something that could spook them too. So again, just another thing to keep in mind. Okay, so say you aren't handling your hognose snake and its enclosure is set up appropriately and it's in a good spot. If it's still not eating rodents for you or preferably unscented frozen thawed pinkies for a baby or regular mice or the right size mouse for an adult, you know what I mean, then try to think about what you're feeding it or how you're feeding it. If you are feeding your hognose snake in its enclosure, some just prefer to be fed in a separate container. So give both options a try to see if your hognose snake has a preference. If you try to feed them in a separate container, I recommend putting them in a round plastic deli or other container, but make sure it's round and it's not see-through. Make sure the sides have a solid color to them. This will reduce distractions from hognoses being able to see outside of that cup. Then when you place the mouse inside of the deli, place it on the edge of the cup so that when the hognose snake slithers inevitably around and around that cup, it'll bump into the mouse each time it makes a round and therefore it'll be more likely to just eat it one of those times. If you place it in the middle of the deli then they're just not gonna see it. Then when you have the pinky inside the deli and the snake inside the deli, cover it up and actually I'd recommend covering the whole thing up with a towel so that they can't see through the lid and again get distracted or spooked by shadows coming by. It can just be them and the mouse. Leave them alone for about half an hour and see if that does the trick. Some hognose snakes much prefer that method of feeding, whereas some prefer to be tongue fed, where you take the mouse and actually use the tongs and feed it to them directly. Some of them like the mouse to be wiggled around a little bit, whereas others prefer it to be still so they can sniff it a bunch and then start eating it. So try new things and see what your hognose snake prefers. And the tongue feeding, whether you wiggle it or keep it still, that goes for both feeding in a deli or separate container and in the enclosure. So there's a bunch of things here you can try. Now if you've tried all of these techniques and still your hognose snake won't eat, and again, make sure you're trying each one at least five days apart from each other so you don't overstress out your hognose snake even more by trying to feed it something new every day, the last thing to consider is what you're trying to feed it. In the wild, they're primarily toad eaters, so a lot of them don't want to eat anything but toads in captivity. The order of techniques that I try with my picky baby hognose snakes starts with frozen thawed, of course. Uh, I want them to eat that first, and if they totally refuse frozen thawed, then I try offering them live pinkies. Some snakes just prefer to eat live as opposed to frozen thawed, and this goes for hognose snakes as well. But if you feed them live, then it's pretty hard to get them off of live and onto frozen thawed from there. 
If feeding live doesn't work for me, then I move on to scenting food with other things. You can take a frozen thawed pinky and rub it across a toad to pick up the scent of that toad, and oftentimes that will trick the hognose snake into thinking it's a toad and then eating it. Other things you can scent with that have been found to work really well with various breeders around the world include eggs, tuna juice, and salmon. I've had mixed results with the salmon, the tuna juice, and the uh, egg, but I've heard of other breeders having really good luck scenting with those. I just use toads because I find that it works the best for me, but that's just because toads are their natural diet in the wild. But feel free to try scenting with something else and see if it works. If scenting a mouse doesn't work, then your last resort is feeding them a different type of food item altogether. You can try feeding them toadlets, which are the little baby toads that come out of the water straight from tadpoles, or an actual toad for a bigger hognose like this one. But if you are collecting toads from the wild, it's risky because they often, or not often, but they may have parasites inside of them, which could affect your snake. So if you do want to try toads or toadlets, look online for someone who produces them. I know there's people out there who sell dehydrated toadlets that you could rehydrate with water and offer to your hognose snake. But toads are tough to find and expensive to purchase, so I would instead recommend feeding them, if you're going to do a different protein altogether, feed them one of two other things that I have found to work. Actually, there's a third that I forgot to mention when recording. You can try to feed them hard-boiled eggs. Feed them one of two other things that I have found to work. Minnows that are thiaminase free. Thiaminase is an enzyme that can cause neurological issues over time. We have a video all about it for garter snakes and how it applies to them if you want to watch that. But there's a whole website that shows you different species of fish that don't have thiaminase in them and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if minnows don't work or you want to try something else, we have had really good luck feeding baby picky hognose snakes chicken hearts. Go to your local Asian food supermarket, find refrigerated or fresh chicken hearts. They're usually really cheap, like incredibly cheap. Like it was two bucks for like 50 of them when I most recently picked them up and slice them into, you know, hognose snake sized pieces. Try to go on the smaller side rather than the larger sides. I found the hognose snakes seem to do better with smaller meals than what you would feed to a different snake of the same size. Anyway, chicken hearts work amazingly well we just recently discovered this year with some of our picky baby hognose snakes we hatched out, including the one that I said I was going to brewmate during the winter. That one refused to eat anything all summer long. It's been like, see July, four months and it ate a chicken heart piece without hesitation. It flicked its tongue a few times and then ate it right away. So we actually won't be brewmating that one anymore since we figured out his trick. He just likes to eat chicken hearts. Once you find an alternate protein source that your hognose snake does want to eat, you can use it to send pinkies with to wean them off of that protein item and back onto mice again. But that covers the four main factors when it comes to feeding hognose snakes and increasing your likelihood of them taking a meal if they're a picky eater. There are some other things just to consider though, or just to remind yourself about, such as uh, male hognose snakes will often go periods of time where they just don't want to eat for a few weeks at a time, and it's totally normal for them. Don't worry about it seriously until they lose 10% or more of their body weight, which is why it's important to have a scale on hand so if they start refusing food or you just really want to keep an eye on their weight, weigh them right away and then keep an eye on their weight afterwards. If they lose more than 10% of their original body weight because they're refusing meals, that's when I would recommend scheduling an appointment with a veterinarian to make sure that they themselves are healthy and it's not just something wrong with them personally. Another common time for a hognose snake not to want to eat is when it's going into shed. So if you notice its eyes becoming slightly cloudy and it skipped a meal, I honestly wouldn't try to feed it again until it's done with its shedding cycle because if it skipped once, then it's probably going to continue skipping meals until it's done shedding. Next, ask yourself what time of year it is. If it's winter and you live in North America where there are much longer nights during the winter months, that triggers kind of a brumation response in hognose snakes since they're native to North America and they often don't eat as well during the winter months. Again, just keep an eye on their weight and as long as they're not losing more than 10%, don't be worried. They'll eat when they're ready. 
The next thing to ask yourself is, did you recently change the color of mouse you've been offering to your snake? Hog noses are just weird. Sometimes they just don't want to eat it, even if it's the same animal, just because it's a different color. On top of that, if you recently bought rodents from a different supplier than where you normally go through, sometimes they smell different to the hognose snake and they don't want to eat them. I know someone personally who has a snake that they actually bought from us a few years ago. It's getting pretty big now, but it refuses to eat mice, frozen mice from retail pet stores, and it will only eat mice that they buy from a larger online distributor. So I don't know if pet stores just get from a different source and maybe they smell different to this snake or it's just all coincidence, that's a possibility too, but it's still something to consider if you recently changed your rodent supply. And the last tip I have for you, if you just recently got a hognose snake and it's not eating at all, reach out to the breeder you bought it from. Ask them what it was eating for them or how they were feeding it, whether in its enclosure or in a separate container. Ask them if they were using any scenting methods to get it to eat or how often they were feeding it. All of those questions will most likely lead you on the right path to getting that hognose snake to eat at your house. But that covers all of the tips and tricks that we have accumulated over the years and owning and producing sometimes very picky eating hognose snakes. But hopefully something in today's video will help you out if you have a picky eater at home. I hope you all learned something new today. And I would of course like to thank our Patreon backers for supporting this channel. You guys are incredible. Thank you again, all of you, for your amazing support. If you have a technique that has worked for a picky hognose snake of your own, we're always looking for different techniques to try or recommend to others who have particularly picky hognose snakes, put it in the comments below. We want to hear about it and maybe it's something we'll try and have success with and then recommend to others in the future. Thanks again everybody and we'll see you next time.